Hi folks, see you speaking again. After we've learned how to use the basic gates and how to use a breadboard, now it's time to make a first circuit using the basic gates. Now the central piece we're going to use in a project today is that little tactile switch and if you hear it, is making a little noise and if I take a picture from its back and I magnified it for you like this so it's a very good quality switch made by Omron same company I was showing you making micro switches for your mice you use for the computers okay now this one here as you can see it has one two one, two, three, four contacts. This one has four contacts. And how are we going to use it? So, before we plug it on the board, I'm going to put it right here for a second to find out how is this organized. So here, the tactile switch, it has one, two, three, four contacts four contacts and if you want they are numbered one two three and four top view top view is like this okay so <clears throat> it's only one contact why does it have four places to put wiring. The pins one and two are related together inside, inside the body here. And the pins three and four are also related together. And the switch is between these two ones. The switch is right here. Normally open. So when you are going to press the switch, you are going to press the switch, that contact is going to close, so it's going to be continuity between 1, 2 and 3, 4. Let's check it. I'm going to place it here. And before I do, you have to notice on the big picture, there are two protuberances here, plastic made, right here in the middle. And these ones should come on the slot. This is how you center the switch very well and is preventing it from moving any direction and the reason the the pins are a little curved all of them is because when you plug this kind of switch on a printed board it won't fall but there is a little trick i have to show you how do you place this one anywhere on a breadboard you don't you don't press you just put it in the position like this and you don't press the lever right here, because if you do, you're going to completely damage the switch inside, which is pretty sensitive. Instead, you pick up a pair of tweezers and you put them across the shaft and then you push it and the switch is okay. And this is the way you are going to preserve it and functioning properly. So now, let's find out. If I'm using this time another meter, you don't have to use the same meter all the time. I'm going to use this one. I put it on arms. I put the wrench. And then, I'm measuring the pins one and two. I said one and two are here. Continuity, you see? Three and four. Three and four are here. Continuity. I put between the line three, four and the line one, two. Overload. You see this? But it's overload. Take a look what happens when I'm going to press the switch. Continuity. I release the finger. Overload. I press it. Continuity. I release. Overload. So, you can do either this or you can do that, which is pretty the same. Overload. 
let me see, I have a bad contact now. Continuity, overload, continuity, see? So this is what we're gonna do. That's how we use the switch, okay? So now, let me just quickly put into the, into the diagram to see how it's working, this kind of switch. It's gonna be a very simple one. In the top here, we have a resistor. And in the bottom here, we're going to have our switch. The switch is over here. This is our switch. Now, here we're going to have a diode, another resistor. And it's going to enter into an inverter. And here we have a capacitor. The top, here is five volts by the way. Top resistor is gonna be 100 kilo ohms. This one is gonna be 4.7 kilo ohms. This is a typical signal diode 1N4148. Any uh, silicon rectifier you have is good. And that capacitor, anything like 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 microfarads, okay? And this is an inverter, and uh, inverters, inverters, we discussed about the inverters some time ago. You have a big list here, and the list is not complete. From that list, I, I pick up this one here, this is the one I'm going to use, but you can use any of them in the list, because if you do, all of them are going to have this kind of pinout. Don't use another kind of package like um, 4049, 4049, because even if it contains also six inverters, the pinout is completely different from that one. So please be careful. That pinout only corresponds for that list. And from the list, I pick up one, and this is one, the one I'm going to use, okay? So, if I pick up the first one from here, the power supply is between the pins 14 and 7, okay? But the signals are input pin 1, output pin 2. So I'm going to use this one. So pin 1 here, pin 2 here. Package number is 4584, as I said before. Now, why this diagram to use a button? It's because I mentioned that in another video, all the push buttons, all the switches, they have the famous bouncing problem. So the purpose of all this diagram is to remove the bouncing for that particular push button. Okay, It's a typical diagram. So this is the switch we want to correct the problem for. Okay, How does it work? Very easy to explain actually. When the power comes on, following this path from here, the capacitor is charging. In the moment you press the button, the capacitor is discharging, taking this path. Please notice there is a diode here, so the signal cannot take another way. It's only this one here. When you press the signal, simply because there's going to be a short, okay, between this point and the ground, it's going to be a short. So it cannot go up, it's gonna go this way, discharging and giving a pulse passing through the inverter. So here at the inverter, depending what you are going to need because we are going to discuss this later too, sometimes the signal is good to take from here, some other times you may need to use a second inverter, like this, and if it, if it is the case, we're gonna the pins number three and four, okay? Because the second inverter here is between the pins 3 and 4, and I'm just going to use the first two ones. And just for the purpose of monitoring what happens, this part of the diagram may just be enough in a lot of applications, but just to monitor what happens, here I'm going to connect an LED. And here another one. Remember, anytime you connect LEDs, you have to have a limiting resistor. Let's say I'm going to put one kilo ohm. 
Okay. So this is what I'm going to monitor at the output of my little diagram. Okay. This is what I'm going to wire, but because I want to correct the bouncing for two push buttons, I'm going to double this diagram. So you're going to watch what I'm going to actually use on the screen. Oh, by the way, before we watch on the screen, uh, uh, talking about this button here, if you go on a site like Adafruit, Adafruit, it's a very known one for components, you just type here 1009, enter, and take a look what they give you. Plenty of such switches exactly like the ones I'm using, with a round cap, regardless of the color. Okay? But if you don't like the round cap, you want a square one, don't worry about it. Instead of typing 1009, you type 1010, 1010, enter. And you get the same nice buttons with a square cap. So far, so good. So that's what we get. On the other side, you have uh, almost $6 for a pack of 15, 15 tactile buttons, okay? Very good. So now we know what to do. And now we want to connect this one into a circuit. I'm going to remove the one I just placed to not bother us because I've made the circuit already, okay? So here are the two buttons. And if I, I said, if I'm placing myself on the screen for the diagram, the diagram I'm gonna use is this one. So as you can see, the diagram right here in the bottom is exactly was the one I put on paper before. It's exactly this one here. And because I want to use two buttons, I'm gonna use the green one and the red one. For the green one, I'm gonna use the two inverters in the bottom of the package. And for the red button, I'm gonna use the two inverters in the top of the package. So, these two ones I'm going to use for the green button, and these two I'm going to use for the red one, okay? So then, the circuit is right here, and uh, it contains all the parts we discussed before. This is the 4.7 kilo ohms. This is the 100 kilo ohms, one for the green, one for the red. We have the two diodes over here, these tiny glass copper color things are diodes, and remember the uh, cathode is marked by a black ring on each, because the polarity is important. And this, from the pin one of the uh, integrated circuit, it goes to the ground, is the capacitor. One here, and the other one in the top here on the pin 30, okay? And these are the two diodes I put, the green and the red in the top. The first diode on the left monitors the first, the first inverter, and the second diode, the second inverter. So now, if I give it power, I just have to connect the power, just to make sure we're going to check the power coming here. So if we just watch the voltmeter, uh, I have to put it on voltage. So voltage, like this. And if we measure, we have five volts, okay? We have five volts, very well. We make the connection, red to the positive, black to the negative. Okay, power on. So then what happens is, I monitor the green push button with green LEDs and the red push button with red LEDs, just for you to be comfortable with the identification. If I press, if I press, obviously, between the two diodes here, the two LEDs, there is one inverter. So the position is going to be right opposite. If I press it, this one goes green, the other one goes off. And if I don't do anything, the first one is off, the other one goes on. Similarly, for the red. Now, how do you know these buttons? If I did the wiring exactly like in the diagram, how do you know these buttons are debounced? If they are debounced, anytime I push them, the counter I still have here on my, uh, on my desk, should advance one position at a time. So then, for your convenience, I'm going to disconnect this green wire from here. 
is going to be the one we use for the green push button. And the red wire from here is the one we're going to use to give pulses from the red button. Okay? And you're going to watch. Regardless what happens here at the beginning, let's say I'm going to restart it. Okay? So if I'm going to restart it, regardless the number you can see, when I press the green, it should advance only one position. You see? One position. Now it goes to zero. One position at a time. It doesn't matter how fast, how slow I press the button. It's only one position. Why? Because the bouncing inside that little push button was corrected by the diagram I presented to you. And the red one, it should go backwards, okay? But only one position at a time, okay? So it's only going regardless how fast, how slow I move up and down. When it goes zero, backwards is 99, and it's continuing counting down or up. So that's how we know the two buttons are debounced. And as I told you before, this is a typical diagram to correct the bouncing for a push button, and I doubled the diagram because we're going to need to use two push buttons. Now, in the near future, we're going to use the bottom side of this uh, breadboard, so the bottom section. We're going to use it for controls, and these are the manual controls for two push buttons. We're going to add here more controls, so at the end, we're going to have a nice, let's call it a micro trainer, we can build together and you can rebuild anytime you want, okay? So, this being said, this was the first project using only one package, the package with inverters. And the practical purpose of using the inverters was what? Is to was to correct the bouncing of two push buttons we can use in our projects. Thank you very much. See you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.